Iola Elementary. Today, Mrs. Coakley and I are teaming up to bring you Utterly Otterly Day. I'm gonna share the story with you and she has an otterific art project for you. So let's begin. Utterly Otterly Day, written by Mary Casanova, pictures by Art Hoyt. Little Otter wakes in a safe, snug den, ready to play in an utterly otterly way. He tugs sister's whiskers, wrestles mama's tail, then slides out the tunnel, whippity, slippity sail. Stay close, woofs Papa. Be careful, Mama chirps. But little Otter bounds away. He's a big Otter now. He knows not to stray. And little Otter cracks clams. Clickety, clickety, crunch. He floats with schools of slick silver fish. Milky, silky, swish. Be careful, be careful, seagulls screech. He's a big otter now. He twirls away, just out of eagle's reach. He bobs up near beaver with chews and chops in her bobbly, beaverly way. Watch out, she warns, whappity, slappity, smack. He's a big otter now. Creak, crack. Little Otter dives deep, dizzily, whizzily down. He bumps into Turtle's toes, jaggedy shell, and sharp snapper nose. He's a big otter now. He swerves and speeds away. Soon his tummy rumbles, grumbles. Time for something too much. Snacks from a bucket, better eat fast. Fisherman's coming, three minnows won't last. He hides by pelicans who slurp up fish in their perfectly pelican way. Swishily, swashily, swish. Mama and Papa suddenly pop. Little Otter, they chirp. Sun sinking low, but Little Otter wanders away. He's a big Otter now. Still time to play. Up a steep slope he climbs. His family circles below. Little Otter, they huff and whoop. Little Otter, time to go. Little Otter leaps toward the top, higher and higher, then skids to a stop. Ravens quit calling, the forest grows still. Something stirs beyond the hill. Now cougar eyes narrow, her belly swoops low. She quietly, cunningly creeps. She slinks and she sneaks. She waits and waits. Mama and Papa screech and cry, Look out, little otter! Danger nearby! Cougar pounces all claws and snarls. Cougar snaps all teeth and growls. Little otter stumbles. Tumbles! Then lickety split, he twists and turns, he flops and flips, he gives a screech. Somersaulting out of reach. Slip, slide down the hill. The otters dart and swoosh. Then whoosh, they hide inside their den. Little otter shakes and shivers. Little otter quakes and quivers. Papa snuggles, nuzzles. Mama tenderly preens until, lick by lick, little otter is clean. His paws stop trembling, his tails tuck to nose. He needs his family, no matter how big he grows. Then little otter closes his eyes and dreams in a sleepy otter way of his whippity, slippity, swishily, swashily, dizzily, whizzily, warily, scarily, utterly, utterly day. Utterly, utterly day by Mary Casanova.
Hi everyone, did you like that story? Wasn't that good? And did you like watching the sea otters? There are some other webcams that if you ask an adult, they can bring it up on your computer and you can watch sea otters at some different aquariums that are pretty big. If one's the Seattle Aquarium, one's the Monterey Aquarium, and one's the Georgia Aquarium. And a webcam means they have a camera on the area where the sea otters live all the time. So you can watch them a lot and see how they do different things. Because it's really cute the way the babies float around and the moms take care of them and they do so much on their back. So we are drawing the sea otter on his back. Okay, so if you want to get a pencil and paper, okay, we'll draw it. And then you can color it later. Okay, if you have colors at home or markers at home or paint at home, you can do that that way. So, this is for kindergarten, first or second grade, because these are all the same lines that we learn from kindergarten through second grade. Okay, so we're going to start with a great big oval. All right, so not just a little oval. We want this sea otter to take up most of your paper. So a pretty big oval, okay? So I'll wait until you get it. Doesn't have to be straight on the sides. You saw in the videos, the video that their, their fur gets real wet and it looks really jagged. So it's okay if it's not straight, all right? And then not right in the middle, a little bit farther up from that, he is going to need a really wide smile curve going all the way across. Now that's going to split up his head from his body, okay? And then go a little bit above that and do a rainbow curve, kind of a flat rainbow, all right? This is where his nose and his mouth and his whiskers are going to be. So his nose is like an upside down triangle that's kind of curvy at the bottom. It doesn't come to a point, but he does have a smile the way we draw cats and dogs that way, okay? Now, when you do your markers or your crayons or things like that, you are gonna wanna make his nose filled in black and give him two curves by for his cheeks got those okay and then some whiskers start them almost up here by his nose and do three or four whiskers on each side then we got that okay now we need just two round eyes and you're going to color those in black in second grade, we've talked about this a little bit. If you want to leave a little part of those eyes white, that's the reflection of the light. Kind of makes him look even a little bit more realistic that way. Okay, and he's got some little ears over here at the side. They kind of remind me of teddy bear ears. So it'll be a curve on each side and have another rainbow curve towards the top. Okay, so here is the other curve and a little bit of a rainbow towards the top. There you go. All right, he is so easy to draw. That's why I said everybody can draw him. Now, he needs a couple of arms and they're just kind of like great big U into the side. They don't have to touch each other. All right. And then maybe three of those little paw marks we've done before. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing for his legs. Two, kind of a U-shaped. He can swim around this way. Or you saw in that video, they were so cute. He can make these hind feet go out and they are kind of like flippers in the water. You can give him those little paw marks. Okay. And now 
He needs a tummy. So you're going to start up here and go down to his paw and do a smile curve around right above his hind paws and then finish out his tummy mark right there. Okay, and then this otter needs a tail. Okay, so we got to get his tail on there. All right, so that is the main body of him and everything else. Now, he's usually kind of a brownish fur. Some of them look light brown and some of them look dark brown. On this one here, I colored him brown on the outside and then the tummy kind of a tan color to make those fur marks okay I took a marker and marked those little fur marks in there on his arms and his hind uh, feet and his tail and up here on the top of his head okay and colored them brown colored his ears, put some of those fur marks up there. And then the water around him, he could be like an ocean, which is all blue. He could be like a pond, which sometimes is kind of a blue-green. I tried to use some blue-green. All I had at home here were markers. I put some little swirls in here and some little waves here and there with a dark blue. And then I colored some light blue and light green around him to look like he's swimming and he turns and does little circles and goes down and comes back up and does all sorts of things like that. So I hope you like the story. I hope you like the little video and I hope you like drawing your own sea otter. Have a good day. A story about a river otter and you've seen a video clip of some sea otters and Mrs. Coakley just completed an art project with you. So it's time to learn just a little bit more. So I have two books, one called Sea Otters and one called River Otters. So let's find out the difference between the two. Let's start with Sea Otters. Written by Anne Windorf. Sea otters are small ocean mammals. Sea otters are warm-blooded. They live in the Pacific Ocean. Sea otters have two layers of fur. One layer is short and one layer is long. The two layers of fur keep sea otters warm and dry in cold water. Sea otters have webbed feet and a flat tail. They, these help them swim fast. Sea otters must swim fast to escape from sharks, whales, and other predators. Sea otters have whiskers. Whiskers help them feel food and dark water. Sea otters live around kelp beds. Kelp is a kind of seaweed. Kelp beds are home to many animals sea otters like to eat. Sea otters dive into kelp beds to hunt for food. They look for fish, crabs, snails, and sea urchins. Sea otters use rocks to break open the shells of prey. Sea otters float on their backs while they eat. Sea otters eat and live in groups called rafts. Rafts of sea otters float on their backs together. They wrap themselves in kelp to keep from floating away and sea otters eat, sleep, and play together in the ocean. Sea Otters by Anne Wendor. Now, let's read River Otters and see if we can discover some differences between sea otters and river otters. So let's read River Otters by Betsy Rathburn. River otters are water-loving mammals. They are usually found in rivers, marshes, and swamps. North American river otters live throughout the United States and Canada. Neotropical river otters are found from New Mexico to Panama. Ritter river otters live in dens. They make these in hollow logs and river banks. 
They also make dens from the burrows of other animals. These usually have underwater entrances that lead to nests lined with grass and leaves. River otters spend most of their time in water. They use their long flat tails to help them swim. Webbed feet help river otters paddle quickly. These animals can swim about six miles per hour. They have a thick tail, short legs, and webbed feet. River otters have flat heads and small ears, and they can close their ears and noses to keep water out. Their bodies are covered in thick brown fur. This waterproof fur helps river otters stay warm and dry in cold water. Adult river otters are about three feet to four feet long, and their tails can be more than one foot long. The otters can weigh up to 30 pounds. River otters are carnivores. These skilled swimmers eat mostly fish. Other favorite foods are crabs, crayfish, and mussels. Sometimes they eat insects and small mammals. River otters have few predators in water. They are mainly prey to alligators. Common land predators include coyotes, bobcats, in New Mexico and Central America, river otters must avoid prowling jaguars. Every winter or spring, female river otters have up to six pups. In about two months, the pups go outside and there they spend most of their time playing near their den. Some facts. Name for babies, pups. The size of their litter, one to six pups. Length of their pregnancy, 60 to 63 days. And time spent with mom, about a year. Otter families love to play. Pups wrestle and chase one another. Mom may join in too. They also slide down hills and splash into the water. This playtime helps them learn to hunt. River otters. I thought you'd like to know a little bit about river otters in Kansas. So I Googled it and came up with the Kansas Mammal Atlas. And they had some information about the North American river otter that I'd like to share with you. They used to be all over Kansas, um, in streams and lakes and reservoirs and wetlands. But around the 20th century, because of overhunting or um, using the rivers for agricultural purposes um, led to the disappearance of many of the river otters. But in 1983 and 1984, 19 river otters from Idaho and Minnesota were reintroduced into the South Fork Cottonwood River in Chase County. That introduction or reintroduction has been pretty successful. And so now today, river otters can be found along portions of at least the Cottonwood, Neosho, Spring, Marmonton, Mariah de Sinai, Delaware, Kansas, and Missouri rivers in eastern Kansas, and in some unreclaimed surface mining areas in southeastern Kansas. Although river otters normally remain near water, they occasionally disperse overland between watersheds. Now, thinking about predators in Kansas, well, we don't have jaguars, so that's not a problem for our otters. Um, here's what it says. They are preyed upon by bobcats, coyotes, cougars, and dogs, and usually humans. Sometimes accidents and diseases also call their death. Do you know what they like to eat? Mm, I don't like that. Okay, I'm gonna start again. I thought you might like to learn a little bit about river otters in Kansas. So I got online as many of you have suggested, that's one way to learn. And found the Kansas Mammal Atlas. And here's what it said. 
It said that the North American river water once occurred in streams, lakes, reservoirs, wetlands, and along coastlines from Alaska through Canada into almost all the arid areas of the United States. In Kansas, we had many along our major rivers and permanent streams, but over trapping and changes in streams brought about by agricultural development led to the disappearance of the river otter in much of the Great Plains. But in 1983 and 1984, they were reintroduced on the South Fork Cottonwood River in Chase County. That introduction or reintroduction has been partially successful. So today you can find river lauders along portions of at least the Cottonwood, Neosho, Spring, Marmoton, Mariah de Sinai, Delaware, Kansas and Missouri rivers in southeastern Kansas and in the unreclaimed surface mining areas in southeastern Kansas. Although river otters normally retain near water, they occasionally disperse over land between the watersheds. The primary habitat for river otters is a permanent water with abundant fish or crustacean prey and very good water. Otters like to move around and they'll go where there is food. Otters are more social and they will forage in groups and sometimes by themselves. A group may consist of a female and her recent young, a group of males or several mothers and their babies. River otters are active year round, but they are most active at night. Dens may be under tree roots and hollow logs or trees, and muskrat lodges or beaver dens or in abandoned burrows. Otters are known for their playful activity. Often an otter will repeatedly slide down a muddy bank into the water, much like a child at a water park. Do you know what they eat in Kansas? They'll eat crayfish and frogs. Other foods sometimes include large insects, reptiles, birds, fruits, muskrats, young beaver, and mollusks. If they live in Kansas, they have few natural enemies.